I think there was some comments yesterday that I guess like something was put out that it was the same one yesterday and today, but they're actually two different ones. Ah, yes, we made a mistake in in that. Oops. So. But I, I do want to point out, I want to apologize if you were in the one yesterday. Um, I did not do the beginner in parts uh -oh. and I apologize. So whatever I didn't do yesterday, I'm adding into today. So you'll be able to see how to log okay. in and everything because I forgot to do that yesterday and I'm so sorry. Um, it is nine o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Great. Um, Christina, did you want to start off? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Gina, you're totally fine. Okay. <laughs> sorry about I'll that. I'll be monitoring the chat for you and um, yeah. We'll okay. Great. So, so if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Gina. I work for Member Hub. I have for a couple of years, um, I'm a member of the customer success team. Um, it's kind of funny how I started with Member Hub a few years ago. Our state in Alabama launched Member Hub and I was a PTA president at that year, my first year. And I was like, we're going to use Member Hub for everything. And so we worked out a lot of the kinks and stuff, but eventually they offered me a job to train other PTAs. And since then I have moved up. I was just installed as VP of membership for Alabama PTA yesterday. And uh, I still am here with Member Hub, trucking along, showing everybody uh, how to use it for their PTA. And then also learning the ins and outs of PTA myself as a volunteer um, at local council and state level. So anyways, uh, today we're going to be talking about using your online member hub store and fundraisers. Our agenda today, I'm going to show you some examples of some different stores and fundraisers through member hub. And then I'll also show you how to log into member hub, accessing your store admin, setting up your Stripe account, how to sell memberships and other spirit wear items in your store, as well as how to pull orders, um, reconciling your payouts from member hub, launching your public website, using give backs to help parents save and raise money. And then also at the end, we'll cover member hub fundraisers and the different fundraisers we offer, a thons, auctions, crowdfunding events, raffles, and sweepstakes. So first I'm gonna show you some examples. And I already have all of these pulled up. So give me just a second. So this is an example of a school in Florida. They have give back. So they featured all their give back offers at the top of their store. And you can actually move those to where they're not appearing at the top of your store. And then they have different items in their store, such as memberships, spirit wear, and so forth. Um, just every, anything that their PTA is selling as a fundraiser, they have posted into their store. They can sort, sort, sort by memberships, different categories that they have set up and so forth. This is a website that was set up by a school in uh, North Carolina. At one time, they actually had a picture of the front of their school on here, uh, which was pretty cool. This is using a custom web page editor, and I will show you, I'll point that out to you shortly when we go over websites, but they've got different little areas within their website. They've grouped their website into um, classes and they have a newsletter that you can go directly to the store and every website has that feature where you can go directly to your school store from the website. This is actually the school. This is their website, the school. This was the front of their school um, that they had posted on their website at one time. Um, this particular fundraiser is, I believe this one's a crowdfunding one where basically they were just taking donations throughout the year. Um, they established different sponsor levels and uh, they, with the crowdfunding, like they, I think they had it where parents had the option to do a regular donation just one time or a recurring, reoccurring donation throughout the school year. And they set the campaign to go throughout the school year. Here's another one um, where they were raising money. Um, I'm, honestly, I can't remember exactly which one is which because I went straight down the list. So this one is an event. This particular fundraiser, they set it up as an event. So they would take registrations and so forth. And they had different sponsor levels for the registrations. They limited the number that they could have for each sponsor level. So if, as you can see, some of them have already sold out and so forth. 
This one right here was a readathon um, they set up, and I think they even had images to show how to, as participant, they created a video for their parents on how to register their participants. Um, for the readathon, they set it up where parents would donate based on how much a child read, or they could make a flat donation. Here's one, this is a calendar raffle, um, where they raffled off different things throughout the, people bought tickets um, to participate in the different raffle prizes, and they had all the different raffle prizes that they could pick which one they wanted to purchase tickets for and so forth. This particular one was an auction. They were auctioning off a fast pass uh, to Disney World. And of course, this is a one in Florida that has Disney World close by. So that made it kind of convenient. Parents could come in and make a bid on different fast passes. And then the last one, this was a sweepstakes where you could enter to win a trip to Disney World. Um, so they were doing a sweepstakes fundraiser through that. So when you first log into Member Hub, you, the login page for everybody is the app.memberhub.co. When you go to that link, it will take you straight to this page. And if you can't remember that it's .co, you can do .com too, because that actually directs it to the same page as well. So for the first time logging in, you're going to click the sign up link where it says don't have an account, sign up. And then you're going to put in all of your information. And this is where you're going to create your password and type it in a second time and then click sign up. And when you do that, you're going to get an email. It's going to say confirmate first that you're going to get the screen that says confirmation required. Visit your email, follow the link to confirm your account. So then you'll go to your email and you'll see an email similar to this where you would just click the link, confirm my account. And then you'll get this window. Your account is confirmed with a link to sign in. So then you click the link to sign in, takes you back to the sign on page where you would put in your email and password that you just created to sign into the account. Now, if you log in and you get this screen and it says organization not found, this is when you need to contact your state PTA because if you are a state leader, then you should already be in an organization with that email address. So you can contact your state PTA and let them know I'm so-and-so, this is, I'm, um, whatever role at this PTA and your state can add you with that email address that you just create an account with as an officer with that school so that you will, the next time you log in, you'll go straight to that school. Now, um, Member Hub has, we are in the process of updating different areas where we don't, instead of doing everything at once, because that's a huge undertaking, we are updating different portions at a time. So right now, we have our new dashboard, which is our, where everything is transitioning to. And that's the window up at the top, the picture at the top. That's what our new dashboard looks like. And then we have our existing legacy, the .com. Uh, we tend to hear a lot from users, oh, it's outdated, it looks so old. Yes, it does, that's why we're updating. So that's the existing legacy. Um, by fall of 2021, so fall of ne this next school year, we will be fully on the new dashboard and no longer existing legacy. But for now, we have back and forth in to access between the two. You would just simply click the dashboard button in the top left corner on the old dashboard and it will take you to the new one. And then on the new dashboard in the top right corner, it says view old dashboard where you can go back to the old one. So you can always go back and forth between the two. Then we also have the dot store. So member hub dot store is where your member hub store is placed at is um, that is the link that you would share with your parents. Um, your subdomain .memberhub.store will take them directly to the store where they don't have to log in to your site to access the store. And then we have fundraisers. So if you create a fundraiser, um, your fundraiser site is your subdomain .memberhub.gives to log into the fundraiser account. So when you first log in as a site admin, if you're the very first one logging in, you're going to get this window to set up your subdomain. It is already, your subdomain is defaulted before anyone ever sets it up to say, it's going to say something like C-O-P-T-A dash all those eight digit number that is your national ID. So you'll want to edit that to be something specific to your school. Um, it could be something just as simple as CTSPTA, 
um, or you can spell it out, but it's going to be something that's specific, cannot be duplicated. Nobody else can use that subdomain for your site. When you log in, if you are, if you have kids at multiple schools or even you're on the PTA at multiple schools, when you first log in, you can actually click your name in the top right corner and see all the different organizations that you're in if you have multiple PTAs that you work with. Um, so that is the great benefit. It's one login, but you can access all of them within one site just by simply clicking your name and selecting which one you want to go to. Hey, Tina, can I pop in for just a yes. second? Could you go back two slides and show us where we find that subdomain? Like, where do you get to that? We, if you are, if you're the very first um, admin logging into that site, this window will pop up. So if you're not the first, like it will continue to pop up until someone updates the subdomain too. So if you've already logged into the site, no one's updated the subdomain, that window will still pop up. And I will show you after the presentation, I can show you specifically exactly where you can go in and change it. If someone said it and you don't like it, um, how it is and you wanna change it, I can show you where to change it in just a moment. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. So um, within the admin console, this is where I'm going to cover stuff that I missed yesterday. Admin console, PTA, these are your compliance. We covered compliance yesterday. But one thing I did leave out about the compliance part was the membership, which might actually benefit you a little bit if you're processing your memberships through your store and you're still selling memberships in person. This is where you would want to come to add those members manually that paid cash or check. So you would click admin console, PTA, and members over here under the PTA pages. And then you'll see this screen here where you would just simply click enter members to enter those memberships. And then you would type in their information, select the membership type. If you're tracking memberships by a teacher name, a student name, or anything like that, you can do that as well. Let's say you're selling memberships for next year, not necessarily this year since it is the end of the school year you can actually change the school year to be next year instead of this year at this time. Then you would click add member and it will email the member a receipt with a link to their membership card and everything. Um, also paying state dues, if you click the state payments button under here, right here under PTA pages, you'll go to this screen here. If you are the treasurer or president, you have to be listed as one of the officers as either treasurer or president for the current PTA year to be able to submit your dues through Member Hub. But it, it, as your memberships are added to your site, whether manually, like I just showed you, or through selling them in your store, they will automatically calculate how much you owe Colorado PTA based on what you pay per member. So then you can click show or hide members to see that list of memberships. And then you can click send payment via e-check here. I don't think many people have the send a check option. If you do, that is an option here as well. Um, I don't know why I even thought to, didn't think to check that with you guys, but if you do have that option, you click send a check and type in the check number. And then uh, when your state PTA receives it in the office, they would update the site as well. So it'll automatically calculate. Now, moving on to the online store. So the online store allows you to sell your membership, spirit wear, anything that your PTA sells, you can sell in your online store. It also gives you the ability to participate in Member Hub gift backs, which is a super easy fundraiser that we have set up that you pretty much just a couple clicks add to your store and you're making a little bit of money. Um, and then also this is where you would create your website for your PTA through the store, as well as accessing your Member Hub fundraisers platform. So to get to the store, you can, if you're on the old dashboard, you would simply just click store admin. And if you're in the new dashboard, you would click online store on the left hand side and store dashboard. Now, any of these options will take you to the store. The view store will take you to the live storefront. All these other options will take you to the store admin area. So when you first get to the store dashboard, you're going to see this window that says payment not set up, set up now, set up payment gateway. Your payment gateway is Stripe. Stripe is a online processing company. It is not, you know, we're just partnered with Member Hub. Stripe and Member Hub are partnered to provide, to handle on the online payment processing. So 
you would need to set up a Stripe account. It's considered a third party Stripe account. So it's only set up through Member Hub. So if you have an existing Stripe account that you're using as a PTA, this is going to be something separate from that. It's not possible to link them together. The nonprofit rates are already established. So you don't need to worry about that if you already have an existing one with the nonprofit rates and so forth. Member Hub has done the legwork for you on that part. So you would just click set up now. And then you're going to get these windows to start setting up your Stripe Express account. Um, the, first, uh, the first step is to put your mobile number. Make sure you put your cell phone number because you're the one setting up the account and you're going to get a verification code text to you. A lot of people don't realize that and they'll either put a landline phone number or they'll put someone else's phone number in there and then they're like, oh, I didn't get the text and then we have to reset it. So make sure you put your own personal cell phone number in there so that you can enter the verification code when they text it to you. Then you'll put in all of your information. Your legal business name is your state PTA day. I don't know exactly what it is for Colorado, but I know for Alabama, it's PTA Alabama Congress. So all of our PTAs in our state have to put that as our legal business name because our, our EIN is established under our state PTA. Um, and that is basically, you can look that up on the IRS website or your state PTA would know exactly what it is as well. Um, simply by searching your EIN, it will show what your EIN is registered under. Then your Ours is PTA Colorado Congress. Exactly. Some of them are very similar, but I've seen some that are a little bit different. Like they have parent, student, teacher, Congress, you know, or something. Some of them have PTA spelled out and some don't. Um, so for your DBA, that's your local PTA name. That's where you're going to put in the name of your PTA. Your business address is you can put in your school address and phone number. Now, when you select for the industry type, make sure you select membership organizations, charities, and social service organizations, because it is a membership organization and it's a nonprofit. So therefore, it's a charity and social service organization. Then you'll put in your banking information, which is your routing and account number, or if you have a debit card number. I have seen though, that if you're using a debit card number, there is a limit. And I, we actually saw a PTA get limited on the amount of money they could get transferred per week with the debit card. So they didn't get all their money that they had raised in a fundraiser. So they had to change it to a bank account routing number. So within the store, the first step you're going to want to do is set up your memberships. So you would go on your products, memberships, and you'll see all of the memberships that your state PTA recognizes. These are all individual memberships. They're not family memberships. Um, a family membership would be considered a bundled membership where you're going to have multiple memberships in that one bundle. And to create one of those, you would simply click new membership. And I'll walk you through that in just a sec. Excuse but, me, I've, got, I've got a question, Gina. Yes. Okay. You, you talked about setting up the Stripe account, all the stuff, fill this stuff in and you enter it. What happens then? What happens once the Stripe account is set up? Well, no, no. You, you fill all that information in and you submit it. There are things that happen to set up that account that you, you have to know about, right? You, once that account is set up, you're good to go. Like if you... If you go through all these steps right here and put in all of this information correctly, you're good to go. There's now, no, there's no test deposit and credit that happens. Nope. Okay. No. All right. Thank Not you. Not with this part. Okay. Now, if if you a lot of times we do see PTAs where they'll put their PTA name as the legal business name. Um, and this will cause their account to go into a pending status, um, requiring more documentation. So if by chance you're one of those PTAs who's already set this up and your account's in pending status, it's asking for more documentation to prove who you are, take a look at your account and I will show you how to get back to this account to um, view exactly what it says. Um, but it, it's possible it could be that. Now, we also have some, Stripe recently did an audit, and a lot of people were not putting in their social security number, or they were creating a bunch of random numbers because <laughs> they didn't want to share their social security number, and Stripe flagged it as those social security numbers not being identified with that organization, um, and so forth. That caused some, their accounts to go into pending, but they had to update their information. Social, uh, social security number? 
Yes, sometimes it will ask only for the last four to verify your identity. And sometimes it may ask for the entire social. Um, and it doesn't always ask it too. It's kind of hit and miss. It's really just a security feature. Member Hub has no access to any of that information. Um, that is completely secure on Stripe that we, we don't see it at all. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still confused about where it's asking for social security number. I see EIN for the business. Right. But now on this screen, it's not showing it because this is every account is going to ask for this information. When you're setting it up in your site, it may ask you for further information. And that's why I mentioned that because we yeah, I just, get a lot of people will ask about that. I'm just, I'm just confused why this would need social security number if you're setting it up for an organization. Because you are a representative of that organization in the same way that when you set up a bank account for that organization, um, I know we pay um, and PayPal. I had to enter my social for PayPal. And when we set up a Google um, nonprofit, I had to put my social in when I created our accounts as the PTA president. Are you going to show where that would, would happen later in the presentation or? Uh, no, it's all within the Stripe setup. Um, I don't have a screen to actually show you that. Plus, that's kind yeah, of secure I, I just information. That, I wouldn't be able to you know, go My suggestion here would be if you're going to talk about this kind of thing, it'd be really good to show how and where that comes up and how, because it's still, people have a lot of trouble setting this up in my, the units that I support. And um, and so this this whole thing about pending status that what you just said is a good, good hint. I had no idea that if they don't put the legal business name in, uh, properly that that can be one of the reasons. So, so this is an area that I can just, I'll share this with Colorado PTA. This is an area where the units I'm supporting are having a lot, are struggling a lot. So we need to help them. And they can always reach out to member hub to, that we can help them as well. Um, we do see a lot of people that reach out with the, that's why I'm mentioning it because of the legal business name. That is the most common reason for a PTA to go their Stripe account to go into a pending status. Um, and like I said, you can always go to the IRS website and after this presentation, I will post the link that goes directly to the IRS website to look up by EIN. Um, and they would just simply type in their EIN and search and it will pull up what their legal business name is. But no, like, I understand that and I appreciate the support and all that. But traditionally, we generally try to give our units um, instructions and support and documentation that tells them what they're what they're what they need to do to set this up up and how to avoid problems or how to fix problems so that something that happens commonly shouldn't always require every unit to call customer support i'm just saying what i'm trying to say here is i'm trying to share with the state who wants to make this the you know the the, the primary way we do business we need to provide this kind of information to the units so they don't run into these problems and experience the frustrations that many of the units that I support have, frust have, have, have experienced. Okay, right. just a and suggestion. I, yes, thank you for your suggestion. And that's the whole purpose of this to make sure that we, uh, I think that's what they're trying to do is provide the training for everyone so, to get the word out. And Mike, yeah, we are see, I'm sorry, but the training handouts and things like that to be sent out to units. We're currently working on that. So thank you for that feedback and, and the pinpoint of where we need to start. So well, thanks, I appreciate Christ that. Thanks, yep. Christina. That's what we need, Christine, Christina. That's really what we need in place now if we want the units to be using this stuff well. Thanks. Okay, so back to the memberships. When, you're, when you go into your membership, you'll need to update the price for each of these memberships because it's going to default to the price that you pay your state PTA. So to edit each membership, you would just click the pencil icon um, for each one to edit. And when you edit, you're going to put in a short and long description of the membership, the price. And when you're creating a new membership, you have the ability to edit the number of members. So that's what I mentioned earlier about a family membership. You would want, say, a family membership you sell for four members. You would edit that to, say, four members, and it'll automatically calculate the minimum price that you can sell that bundled membership of four members based on what you pay per member in your, to your state. 
So you can also add custom options such as student name, teacher name, grade, and so forth. Any information that you're wanting to track memberships by, you can put that, add those options in as well. Every membership requires a member name, a phone, and email. Um, now, if it's a student membership, they're not going to require a phone or email. You can actually sell a student membership by just name. Um, but every other membership is going to require either a phone or an email to be put in. Now, um, you can also sell other products in your store, and that is also under the products area, selecting products and then new product. And then it works in the same way that the membership does that I just pointed out. You have a, a name of the, the product, short and long description, price. One thing that products have that memberships don't is you can allow shoppers to enter a custom price. Um, this is really good with donations and so forth. So if you choose to allow them to enter a custom price, then you can put in the minimum amount that you want them to enter. Um, let's say that you're doing donations, but you don't want a donation less than $5. So you can check that box and put $5 being the minimum. And this is where you would want to create, um, when you're setting up products, you can put your products into specific categories. I like to tell PTAs to set up your categories based on what your budget is, like what the line items in your budget. So that makes it really easy for reconciling, determining how much money you've brought in in each area on your budget. Um, the category, every store is defaulted to have donations and memberships. And it's a really simple little step where you go under categories and you would just click categories, add category and give it a name. And when you do that, it'll show up in your list of options when you're creating a product. Now, also you can add additional fields for a product such as colors, sizes, or even a custom option. And I'll get to that in just a moment as well as tracking inventory. If you're tracking inventory for an item, this means that you have a limited quantity to sell. I've seen a lot of people turn on inventory tracking because they want to track how many orders they have for that product. And that's kind of confusing. So tracking inventory is only to limit the number of items you sell. So if you have inventory of an item, that's where you would turn on inventory tracking. Um, just by simply checking that box. You can also add images of the product that you're selling. When you create custom options, the colors and the sizes have a list of preset colors and sizes, and you can click an X to remove those different colors that you're not going to offer. And you can even type in the field options to add colors that you are offering. The colors field is a select field type, meaning that they would select one of these field options um, from the list. You can also make custom fields required by checking the required box. And then also these are the different types of custom options. So if you're creating um, a custom field that's not colors or sizes, you would click the add custom option and you can select from one of these three types of field types. The text means that they're just typing in an answer to your question. The field name is the basically asking them the question. So an example of this would be student name. And then you would, that would be field name would be student name, text would be the field type, and then field options, they, you, that would not even appear if it was a text field. Um, if it was a select field or multi-select, meaning they can select one or multiple options, then you would type in the field options in the field area. You would just simply type in the field, each option and click add after each one and it'll add all those different options. Once you've created the product and you, if you've turned on inventory tracking, you're gonna see a little truck next to the uh, little truck icon for that product. And that's where you're gonna click on that to update your inventory for the product. So in the inventory for the product, it's going to automatically pull um, all of your select fields. So let's say that you want your parents to select the teacher name as well. Make sure you, and you have inventory turned on, make sure you make the teacher field a multi-select or else you're going to see select field for each teacher where you would have to type in inventory as well. So if you're turning on inventory and you have a select field that you don't want to track inventory with, you would want to make sure that you make it a multi-select so that it doesn't pop up inventory options for those fields. So in this, you would just simply type in the number that you have for each of those sizes and click it just, and it'll update the current inventory level. 
if you're selling shirts in person and you need to update your inventory as well, you can come in here and just type minus or negative, however many you sold, and it'll take those off of your inventory. Also though, if you are selling in person, you can also add cash or check options in the store rather than having to update your inventory and it even emails them a receipt. So to do that, you would simply go to orders and click add cash or check order and it's going to take you to the storefront. When you click add cash or check order, it's going to take you to the to the front of the store where you are like that customer checking out. So you're going to add that item to the cart and then check out. And now on the checkout screen, you're going to see record cash or check option. Keep in mind, only site admin have the ability to record a cash or check payment. Uh, your parents are not going to see this option on their checkout screen. Only you as a site admin is going to see this option. So you would simply click record cash or check payment, and then you would put in the customer's information, not yours, the customer, and then you would select cash or check and hit next. And once you've done that, then you can click complete order and it will show up in your orders list. So, and it will automatically update your inventory too, if you have inventory tracking on that, and it will email the customer a receipt. So within the orders, this is where you're going to see all of your orders in your store. Um, you can sort it by fulfilled, unfulfilled, and refunded. If you have give back orders, it's going to show up as NA for the status. Membership orders will automatically be marked fulfilled, meaning that there's no further actions needed for that. The parent gets an emailed receipt as soon as the purchase is made. Um, and in the emailed receipt, it has a link to their membership card. So they've gotten what they ordered. Now, any other item in the store will not be fulfilled. So you would want, if you wanted to, you could mark it fulfilled yourself by just simply clicking on the order ID number. And then for each item in the order, you can mark it fulfilled. If you have donations, a lot of times people like to send a thank you letter to the parent who made the donation. So that's why those are not marked fulfilled. We get that question quite often and they like the idea of sending a, a thank you letter, a personal letter. So we tend to leave that unfulfilled to allow them to do that and then mark it fulfilled. Every week you're going to get a deposit to your PTA checking account for all of your orders sold in your store as well as fundraisers and so forth. So your deposit will be for, it will come on Friday and it will be for all of your orders from Wednesday up to, or Thursday up to Wednesday, the day before the deposit. So this deposit that if you are selling items in your store right now, you, the, the deposit you get this Friday would be for all of your orders in your store from Thursday last week up to Wednesday this week. And if you, once you get that deposit though, you're gonna wanna see what orders are included in that deposit. So that's where you would click payout reports within the orders screen. And when you click payout reports, you're going to see a list of the different reports for each payout that you've received. Notice that they're dated for the Wednesday. This is the date and time that they cut off the orders in your store that they started transferring that money. So for this particular example, the first one says March 3rd at 7.19 p.m. So that was the cutoff point. So any orders that came in the store that night after 7.19 p.m. will go in the next deposit but for now, the deposit you, they received on March 5th would be all of their orders in their store up to that date. Now, when you click the, the little button, like the, this, each of these are a link, the name of the report, it's a link that you would be able to download as a CSV file, which is similar to Excel. And each line is an item ordered in that payout report. If there was multiple items ordered in one order, then it would have multiple items, multiple lines for that one order. There's a date and time stamp for every order, has the customer's name, their email, um, the quantity of an item that they ordered, as well as the price, the subtotal, and fees. I know Colorado PTA, you guys cover the fees. So because you, got, you have to cover the fees, then it would show zero in that field, showing that the parent paid nothing for the fees you did. So if you need to calculate how much you're you had to pay in fees, you would take the subtotal amount and the transfer amount and the difference between those would give you the amount that you had to pay in fees from that payout. The transfer amount is how much your PTA got for that specific order. 
And then also it has the item name, the category for the product, as well as a direct URL for the item. The category, I like to sort the list of orders by category and then do a, um, do a sum calculation for each of the subtotals or transfer amounts for each of those to be able to see exactly how much we got in each category. Because like I said, I like to keep the categories lined up with our budget to give us exact numbers. So the next part we're going to cover is the website. So um, as a member hub user, you have the ability to set up a free website for your PTA um, and you get up to six pages within that website. So to set that up, it's all within the store. You would just click website, get started. And the first page you're going to get is the landing page. And so you would just click edit to edit your landing page. And this is what the landing page looks like completely blank. You would just simply click to add about us information. You can enter a short description. If you click this little icon over here, you can upload an image. Um, some people like to upload an image of their school. We also have preset images that you can select from as well. Um, the other different pages, so that was the landing page. Here's some other pages. If you wanted to add more pages, you would just simply click add page and you'll get this option here um, where you would select the layout. Now the content page is one big content block where you could just type in anything you want. You can put pictures in that content block, put, limit, put links to different websites and so forth. The events page will pull all of the events from your main calendar for the current calendar month. So if you created an events page, it would pull right today, it would show all of your events that you have in your calendar for April, all future events in your calendar. It's not going to show last week's events, but it will show all upcoming events for April if you did it today. The landing page is the one I just showed you. The officers page is going to pull all of your officer information. Uh, listed within your site uh, under the admin console PTA officers. Keep in mind, this is going to show personal information on there. So if you don't want your officer's personal information out, you can just create a custom page editor or something like that with the officer's names and not necessarily have their contact information on there. Uh, the custom page editor was the example that I showed you earlier for the website. It's um, similar to the newsletter like I showed you yesterday where you can click and drag and create like different rows and columns and so forth and add different media. You can add buttons that they can click a button on the website and it'll take them to another page and so forth. Um, once you're done creating your website and you're ready to make it live, it's a two step process. The first step is to make the website live, which is the live switch up here where you would just simply click live. Now each page needs to be made live as well um, in order for them to appear on the website. So to do that, you would click the visibility icon for each page and then check the box is live. The next thing we're going to talk about is Member Hub Givebacks. So Member Hub Givebacks, it's a passive rewards program, uh, meaning that there's it's rewards that you pretty much offer to your parents through other businesses and your PTA gets a little bit of a give back for it. Um, businesses will place give back offers in your PTA store and parents will purchase the give back offer and become a new customer for that business and support your school. Uh, your PTA automatically gets up to 20% of each sale donated back. And there's no out-of-pocket cost for the PTA or the business. It's a win-win for both. So to get started in Givebacks, the first step is to click Givebacks and click Subscribe to Givebacks. And once you do that, you're going to see a list of offers in your, in your site where you can choose which ones you want to add to your store. So they don't appear automatically. You're going to choose what offers you want to appear. So to do that, you would just simply click the offer that you're interested in and then check the boxes for which offers you want to add to your store and then click add selected offers to store. And when you do that, they will show up on your store and as parents purchase them, your PTA will get those little bit of a gift back. As you can see this page, it actually shows how much you would get back. Like this particular offer, um, the parent would purchase a subscription and you would get a gift back up depending on which subscription they purchase. 
Now, once you have subscribed to GiveBacks, the next step is to let your parents know about it. So you're going to want to launch GiveBacks. To do that, that's within the store settings. Under the store admin, you would just click store settings and you'll see this button launch. So you would click that. And then you would have on the right hand side here, this is the email that you would basically, if you want to launch without sending the email, you can do that as well. But if you want to send an email to everyone in your site, letting them know we've launched Member Hub Gift Bags and it's a easy, no fuss fundraiser. All you got to do is just check out the business offers. You can send that to your parents. Um, to let them know about the Give Backs fundraiser. Now, there are some notification settings I should point out for Give Backs. Um, you, if you want to, if you don't want to manually add the Give Back offers as they come available and you want them to automatically be added to your store, you can do that under the new offer Thursday approvals. That means that every Thursday, any offer that's been available for 11 days will be added to your store automatically. You don't have to add it yourself. So if you turn that on, there's no work on your end. Um, but just keep in mind that all new offers, you won't be able to filter through which ones you want, which ones you don't. Now, the Give Back Tuesday one means that all of your parents would be notified every Tuesday when there's new offers in your store. They would only get this email on Tuesdays if there are new offers and they can unsubscribe from these notifications and still get your PTA emails as well. So they would only be unsubscribing to the Give Back Tuesdays and not necessarily the PTA emails. So if you want to notify your parents every Tuesday about that, you can check that box or you can turn that off as well. Now, once you launch Give Facts, you as a PTA, you're gonna get an email every Thursday as a site administrator, only your Site administrators are going to get that email on Thursdays letting you know of any new offers. It's that there's no way to turn those emails off, but if you don't want to receive them, you can also unsubscribe as well. Now, the, the next step in GiveBacks is to invite local businesses because it's no fun if you don't have any local businesses. So you want to click GiveBacks, invite local businesses, and then you can search for businesses in your area. Um, I recommend contacting the business directly first and asking for permission um, to, to you know, see if they want to partner with your PTA and so forth. Um, and it can even be specifically to only your PTA or all the PTAs in your area to partner with. Um, so other schools can benefit as well. So get a contact and email address, look them up in, in Givebacks once you search for them, put their name and email address in and send an invitation. It says that you can invite them anyway, even if you don't have their contact, um, but it, just keep in mind, it will take a lot longer for the member hub team to contact them because basically what happens is you're submitting their information to member hub. Member hub is going to contact the local business, the business in your area, and they're going to work out a gift back offer and then get it added to your store. And once it's added to your store, then your PTA will get a $50 um, get a $50 thank you deposited into your Stripe account that will come into your PTA checking account on Friday. Uh, the last part we're gonna cover is Member Hub Fundraisers. Uh, Member Hub Fundraisers allows you to create a professional online fundraising page. It's completely separate from your store. Um, instead of a shopping cart experience, they're basically accessing a fundraising web page. So to get started with fundraisers, you would click fundraising on the store side and go to fundraisers. And then these are the different types of fundraisers. We do a thons, raffles, auctions, events, sweepstakes, and crowdfunding. Um, and I'm gonna briefly go over each one really quickly. A thon, like I mean, I think most of us understand an a thon, it's for an amount of activity that um, would be performed. It can be one participant or many. There can be team fundraising, donations can be one-time donations or per unit of activity. And this is perfect for a virtual fund run to read a thon. Crowdfunding is very similar to an a thon. The biggest difference is that it's not based on activity. Um, so there's no like donations per unit of activity, um, but you can also add merchandise or perks for higher donation levels. And you can do one time or recurring donations with crowdfunding. Gina? Yes. A quick question on the Athon is: uh, do, do each of the participants get their own website for individual fundraising? Yes, they do. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. 
For an event, this would be where you would basically allow people to easily register online for either a virtual or in-person gathering. Um, the registrations can be limited for a specific time or even a limited amount. Um, you can even check attendees in from your account if you're doing like an in-person event. And you can also create discount codes for early or special registrations. Then there's an auction. People will bid on items and the highest bidder will win. Um, you can do either an English auction, which is the traditional style, or a proxy auction, which is your eBay style auction. Bidders are notified by email and text if they're outbid, and the winning bidder's credit card is charged at the end of the auction. You can also add in the fair market value of items, and the winner's email receipt can be used as a tax receipt. Good question. Yes. So if you're using the auction option, if they're going to register as a bidder, do they have to enter that credit card information in order to be registered? Yes. Gotcha. Um, so they have to, they basically are putting in their, their payment information when they make the bid. Um, and then if they win the bid at the end, they'll get an email notification that they won and their account was charged. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. For raffles, people will buy entries into a drawing for a chance to win a prize. Entries are for a chance to win any of the prizes listed, or they can actually purchase entries to win just a specific prize. This is actually considered gambling by the IRS, so the more entries you purchase, the higher your chance of winning. The winner can be drawn randomly by the system or manually by the admin, and tickets can be sold in person and then added manually into the drawing as well. Now, sweepstakes is very similar to raffle, except that for a sweepstakes, you are also offering a chance for them to enter for free. Um, there are official rules for the sweepstakes, and it, they're all automatically created when you set up the, the campaign. The rules are edited for eligibility specifics. The system will randomly draw the winner for a sweepstakes, and yet they cannot be manually drawn by an admin. Also, physical tickets cannot be sold and entered into the sweepstakes drawing. Um, the physical tickets are actually the free entries and then the uh, online tickets are sold. So a lot of people ask how much it costs for member hub to use member hub fundraisers. So there's two different options and it really all depends on what works best for your PTA and how you set it up. There's the platform fee, which is what member hub gets for the fundraiser. So the platform fee can either be free or a percent pricing, which is the flat fee. The free option means that you would pay member hub nothing to use member hub fundraisers. But in the free option, you will still have, your PTA will have to cover the Stripe processing fees, which are the 2.2% plus 30 cents per transaction. Now the flat fee, it's a percentage and base, basically you would be paying member hub a percent of each donation and you can edit that to be covered by the parent or even a sponsor is covering it. It's however you set it up. Also with the flat fee option, you can choose to pass on the processing fees. I'm sorry, I, I forgot Colorado PTA cannot pass on processing fees. My apologies, I forgot about that. So you would not be able to pass those on. But um, for the flat, for the, the pricing option though, the percentage, you can choose how the percentage is paid between the, the donor and the PTA or one or the other or both. Um, also, I wanna mention that the free option, parent, the donors are asked to give a tip to member hub to help compensate the cost. Since you, we're giving it to you for free, it's kind of a, would you like to tip member hub as a thank you and help your PTA earn the, um, earn the most amount of money? It's not an obligation. Even if nobody tips member hub and you choose the free option, it's not like later on you're going to be surprised and have to pay. All you will have to pay is the Stripe fees. Um, here's just a better explanation of it. Free option, zero platform fees, Optional tips from supporters at checkout allows them, allows Member Hub to offer the platform free of charge. No subscriptions, no contracts, no upfront cost. Free pricing helps you keep almost 100% of the funds you raise. And I say almost because of the strike processing fees. A lot of people get surprised by that. So I just want to stress, if you choose the free option, the only thing you're paying as a PTA is the 2.2% plus 30 cents per transaction. Now, for the percent pricing, it all depends on the fundraiser, how you set it up. Um, the percent pricing is um, 
fixed at 4.9% for crowdfunding events and auctions. It's 7.9% for raffle sweepstakes and a thons. And it's applied to each donation and you decide who covers the cost of that. So now um, for questions. Uh, also, let me point out all the different ways that we have to help. We have our member hub guide for PTAs, our support articles. These are the different links. And then also you can always email us at support at memberhub.com. Gina, I have a question back when you were speaking about the membership in the membership yes. creation section. So our PTA bylaws only allow for a single membership type. We don't have anything besides just a general membership that everybody pays the same. So okay. I, when I was setting everything up, it pretty much, I was not able to figure out if there was a way to just have a single membership um, that I just called membership or whether or not I had to use, cause I couldn't delete the existing memberships that were there for me. Right. So the ones that are automatically listed are ones that your state recognizes. So I don't know exactly what is listed in Colorado. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I'm guessing they may have something that's particular like an individual one or a parent or something like that. I would say use that one and you can edit the price and you can edit the name if I'm not mistaken. If not, I tried, I tried to edit the name and I did not like the fact that it had specific I mean, grandparent, it had student, it had parent guardian, it had community. I mean, it, it just, it, I don't want to have five different options. for. I just want one option for people as they come in. And I don't want it so specific that it has to be grandparent. It couldn't be the uncle. It couldn't, you know, that people would have to try and figure out where they fit in. Right. Seems, we're talking about inclusivity, right? I just want to be inclusive and oh, have it yeah. be a single, single uh, type. So if there's a way that I could figure out how to just have a single one, that would be great. Um, I'm, I'm going to go into the Colorado. I stopped sharing my screen for a second because I got to log in to the monolith, like behind the scenes to get to Colorado. So let me show you and I can look into it a little bit closer to show you. Hold on just a second. Um, but basically what I would suggest is creating, um, just creating a new membership and then doing it where, uh, so Gina, when there's a whole list of different options on there, are you able to choose which ones are visible to your unit and which ones are not? You are not able to edit it for a custom membership. Um, so basically what you would want to do, I'm trying to hold on just a second, it's zero. I can hide them. So I hid say the business one because we don't have business memberships in our bylaws, but I, so I can hide them, but I, in order to include everybody, I had to have visible all of the other general memberships. And it also just cluttered up my, my store. <laughs> yes, Great I agree. Feedback. Thank you. Yes. So um, I'm in the Colorado test one. So I see you guys do have a lot of memberships. So what I would suggest, like you can hide all of these, like by clicking visibility and hide, like these are already hidden and these are the only two visible in this little test site. Um, I would suggest creating a new one and making it for one membership and then putting whatever name you want. But keep in mind that when you do that, on the live store, they're going to be asked to select that membership type um, from the dropdown. So they'll select one of these from the dropdown. They won't, you won't necessarily see all these different types in your store, but they would be able to select what type they want from that membership that you Okay. Create. Yep. That would be perfect. Yep. That excellent. Good. Great. Thank you. Gina? Yes. Do you have options to build surveys? Uh, no, there is not a feature to build surveys in Member Hub. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. Hey Gina, when you were talking about raffle, um, does that take out the necessity of having a games manager at our state level? Does Member Hub, um, I guess, assume that liability? I, I would say coordinate that with your state PTA. That sounds like something 
is someone here that might be able to answer that question for a state? I'm not sure. Um, perhaps Nora, if she's still out there. If not, Raining, we will look into it and let you know. Hey, thank you. Well, actually, that brings up a great question because I had always thought that it was on an individual PTA level that we needed to have our own games manager if we needed, if we were to do any type of raffle. So it wasn't like at the Colorado state level, but actually our individual local level. Yeah, that's true. Uh, my husband's actually our games manager. I talked him into it, but I'm just trying to uh, determine if he needs to maintain that essential certification or not. Um, earlier, someone asked about how to edit your subdomain. So when you're within this site and you go to admin console settings, and if you scroll down from, it's on profile, if you scroll down, this is where you can edit the subdomain for your site. Um, make sure that if you're editing it, you haven't already shared that subdomain with parents and so forth, because changing it will cause them to not be able to access to find your site if you do that. Gina, I have a question. It may have been more from yesterday where it was talking about the directory feature of yes. Member Hub. And that is something that our PTA specifically has purchased platforms for in the past. So I think you had said it was going to be coming online soon, but if you could provide any more details about how that is expected to work, because we're actually actively trying to determine if we can move to Member Hub for that capability or if we'll still need to purchase a separate I, for what we want for our organization? I, I don't have the screen, like that site, like directly in front of me to be able to show you the features. And I don't think I'm allowed to share that just yet because it's still in alpha testing. Um, but I can tell you that the directory is more, uh, you would be able to view people by family or individuals. Um, you can search by specific roles within the family or even specific roles within the site for the directory. Um, you should be able to print it and so forth um, as well. So for the, and, and maybe the thing that my concern is, is the ability to have parents be able to be part of Member Hub and individually set up what they would like to be shared or if nothing's shared at all, but still have otherwise I guess, access to all the other features. I mean, I'm guessing that's part of it, but I don't know if you have anything to. Yes, they would all be able to, so they would be able to edit how much they want to show for their profile. You can also um, edit as well, uh, which currently that's already, like they can edit their profile and the site administrator can edit how much they want visible for each personal profile as well. Um, it's a bit more intuitive with the new updates. Uh, like I said, late April, early May is when they're looking at having that launch. So if you could wait just like a month, then you'll probably be able to make a decision on which route to go. Based Great, on thank you. Most recent update. Yes, you're welcome. And Christina, thank you for sharing the EIN or the um, link for the IRS website to look up your EIN. I did have a quick question. How easy is it to do custom um, coding in the site? Are you referring to like the website feature? Yes. Yes, it is pretty simple. It does not allow JavaScript though, but HTML, basic HTML is, is pretty simple to, to use within the custom web page editor. And does it just do everything below the banner or can you also do the banner? Uh, the custom web page editor, let me go back to the site that has that one. Here we go. So it is fully editable however you want. Like this particular PTA had a banner for part of it. It is one for the custom web page editor. It is a full blank screen where you would drag and drop areas and you can choose to put HTML or even just type text in it. Um, it's very, let's see if I can go into here to do it. I might be able to. So you can see. See, it's 
it's very blank. Um, it's going to generate a custom web page editor. So if you wanted to do a banner, you could do that here. You would, you know, say I want to do columns. I mean, it's just all blocks and you just, it's full, it's like a blank canvas and you just create it however you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Gina, are there limits on the amount of pages or anything that you can do on the website? Six pages. You can have up to six pages. You can create extra ones. Like I think our, our Wisconsin test site that we use has like 10 different web pages that we've created, but it will only allow six to be live. And I'm going to remove this one that I created just because this is not my test site. So I'm going to leave that for Colorado PTA. I apologize. It is 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock your time already. Um, I know we were supposed to end by five minutes till, and I'm so sorry. That is all right. If anybody else um, has questions, feel free to email me or, um, you know, we can definitely get you hooked up with the support um, people at, at Member Hub. But I do believe that our next general meeting is starting so we should probably all hop over there thank you so much gina for everything all the information we appreciate you thanks have a great day you too